In this video, we'll look at CSV Asset Importer, a feature of the ACS AEM Tools open source project, and how we can use it to define and ingest assets and metadata into AEM assets. CSV Asset Importer is a tool that allows you to define and import assets and their metadata into AEM using a CSV file. The most common use case for this tool is to import assets and their metadata from legacy systems into AEM. Often, as part of this migration, assets and their metadata must be reviewed and sanitized to ensure only relevant and clean data from the legacy system is imported. Using the CSV Asset Importer has the added benefit of being able to leverage Excel to model the data. Because of this, it's easy for business users to engage in the creation and review of the assets and their metadata. Additionally, Excel is a powerful tool that allows formulas to drive the generation of metadata. After watching this video, I encourage you to review the feature doc page on the ACS AM Tools website I've pulled up here to understand this feature in more detail. In order to use CSV Asset Importer, you must have the latest ACS AM Tools installed on your AM instance. To download, simply go to the ACS AM Tools website and download the latest release. Once you have it downloaded, install it into AEM using the AEM Package Manager. In this video, we'll use Excel to model our data and then export it into CSV for the final import. The sample CSV is set up to ingest 10 assets, but of course, in real migrations, these files can model thousands of assets. So let's take a look at how this is constructed. The first row is very important, as it defines the columns. Columns can be broken into two categories, reserve terms, which I've highlighted in red, and property definitions, which are on the white background. Reserved columns have a special purpose and instruct the CSV asset importer tool to act in specific ways. The white property columns simply define the property and the values that should be added for that asset to its metadata node. So let's start with the reserve terms. The two key reserve terms are absolute target path, which defines where in AEM this asset will be imported to. In this case, we'll be importing it to content dan animals dogs dog dash 1001.jpg. If any of the intermediate folders don't exist, they'll be created. The rel source path instructs the CSV asset importer where to look for the binary to ingest. In order for this to work, all of the assets must be exported from the legacy system and moved to a file system that the AEM instance performing this ingestion can access. Now let's take a look at property column definition. The property columns are in the format of property name and an optional double curly brace property type, colon, multi, with two ending curly braces. The property name is self-explanatory. This is the property name which the value will get stored into. The property type simply defines the JCR property type that will be created for this value to be persisted into. Lastly, we have this multi indicator. If a property needs to be a multi value, simply add multi to this definition. If multi is excluded, it's assumed that this is a single value property. As you can see here, we've defined our DC title property on our metadata node to be of type string and be a multi value. Once we get over to CQ tags, we again have a, a multi string, but we have multiple values that we're actually persisting into this property. To delimit the multi values, we use the pipe. In this case, we'll have a animals dog tag as well as a action sleeping tag. If needed, the pipe delimiter can be customized. If the curly braces are omitted, the properties is assumed to be a single value string. We can also specify dates by providing the date property type. The dates must be in the proper ISO format as defined in the feature doc page. We can also specify integers or longs, and we can go even further by defining complex node structures. So in this case, I'm storing a Boolean value in a property named can order on a fulfillment node under the assets JCR content node. To do this, we use relative pathing. By default, all of these properties are stored on the DAM assets metadata node, which exists under JCR content. So here, we can use relative pathing to go up a few levels and then back down. If any of the intermediate nodes are missing, they will be constructed as NT unstructured. It's worth noting if any value is left blank, the property will not be created. So now that we have a good sense of how to construct a CSV file that will model our data, let's try to import it. 
So to do this, I'll simply save this file as a CSV. Now let's head over to AEM. I've installed ACS AEM tools, so we should have our CSV asset importer available to us under the tools, ACS AEM tools, CSV asset importer. We have a number of options, but we'll just focus on a few for now. The first is providing the CSV asset importer file that we exported. Next, we select our import strategy. When selecting the full import strategy, the CSV asset importer will completely remove any matching existing assets that may exist at the absolute target path and recreate them based on the CSV file. When selecting the delta import strategy, the CSV asset importer attempts to update or readjust any existing assets it can find at the absolute target path before creating a net new asset. For example, if an existing asset is found at the absolute target path, the tool will simply update the metadata rather than deleting and re-importing the, the asset's binary. Since this is our first import of our CSV file, we'll stick with the full strategy. Next is important. This is the absolute file dump location. This is where the CSV asset importer will look to find the file specified in the rel source path column in our Excel. So we need to make sure that the absolute path from the file dump location post fixed with the value in the rel source path points AEM to the file to ingest. In this case, I have the files on my desktop. In this case, I have the files on my desktop in a folder named images. So I need to provide the path to the images folder. For now, we'll skip over the rest of these inputs, but you can read up on them on the feature doc page. Now let's import our 10 assets. A best practice for importing assets at scale is to disable the workflow launchers that kick off asset-related workflows and simply import the asset binaries and metadata and post-process your assets later. However, for this video, and since we only have 10 assets, we'll leave those enabled. You'll see we've imported our assets, so let's check them out. I have my animals folder. I have a newly created dogs folder. And as you can see here, I have all my assets. If I open up my Excel, we can see that my titles have been imported, sleeping dog. If I select this, and view properties. As you can see, we also have our description that we provided, along with our tags of animals, dog, and action sleeping. We also have our location of Boston, Massachusetts. And I've augmented the advanced schema to display our three custom properties. So we have our migrated date, our legacy doc ID, and our can order. As we all know, mistakes can happen and things can be missed. So let's take a look at how we can leverage our CSV file to augment and adjust assets that we've already imported. One of the adjustments we can make is adding a property. One of the one of the adjustments we can make is adding a property. So let's add a DC creator to all our assets. In this case, we'll have the creator be Ira. As you can see using Excel, it's as simple as filling down. We can also change existing values. Or completely remove values. We simply have to save our changes, go back to our CSV asset importer. Now, since we don't want to remove the existing assets we've already imported, we simply want to update them, we'll choose our delta import strategy. As you can see here, we now have an option to update the binary. In this case, we actually haven't changed the binary for any of these, so we can select no. This will reduce some of the load on the system, since we don't have to ingest the actual binary and re-rendition it. All we have to do is simply update and modify the metadata properties. So let's go ahead and run this. 
Again, before importing any assets or updating properties, ensure that your AM instance is configured to handle the workload. So we've quickly updated the assets. Let's go back to our assets and refresh. As you can see here, we've updated the title to a snoozing dog. If we open the properties here, we should no longer have a description and we should now have a creator field filled out. The last feature I'd like to cover is the asset uniqueness column. This is a column in your CSV file whose value uniquely identifies an asset across AEM. Often, legacy systems that don't identify assets by path will assign a unique ID. This unique ID can help identify and trace an asset throughout the migration process. If we review our Excel doc, I've created a legacy doc ID column. This contains a unique ID across my assets. Because of this, it'll allow us to do some interesting things. Let's say we have an evolving business requirement that mandates the last three images be put into a folder named canine instead of dogs. Now with three assets, this isn't a big deal, but if you extrapolate that to thousands, this can cause a bit of trouble. So what we can do is leverage our asset uniqueness column and our legacy doc ID in order to help us identify and move the assets as needed. To do this, we simply change the absolute target path to the new desired path and save our CSV. Now within the CSV asset importer, we can select our updated file and we can provide the column name for our asset uniqueness column, which in our case is legacy doc ID. Please note that this will perform a query on this property. So if you are running Oak, you must have a property index on this. If you do not, you will incur extremely long query times that will adversely affect your system performance. So absolutely ensure you have a property index for this property. I have added one to my Oak index dam asset Lucene index to ensure that this is a performant query. Effectively, what this will do is as these assets are ingested, it will search the system for any asset with a matching legacy doc ID and then move or adjust as needed based on the CSV file. So once we run this, we should see the last three assets being moved into a canines folder and out of the dogs folder. And as you can see here, it's reported that they have been moved, but let's verify. So we're missing the last three out of our dogs folder. Let's check to see if a canines folder exists and what it has. So we have our three moved assets in our canine folder now. I highly encourage you to head over to the ACS AM Tools website and read through the CSV asset importer documentation to get a complete and thorough understanding of all of the options available.